What's good, y'all? In today's video, I'm gonna be ranking every boss in Inkwell Hell from the worst to the best. Obviously, I won't be including King Dice or the Devil because they would for sure be one and two. Now, I know, I know, y'all are gonna disagree with me on a good amount of these, so try to go easy on me in the comments. If y'all enjoy the list whatsoever, it would mean the world to me if you could drop a like and throw a subscription my way. It's free, and it helps out small channels so much. I'm waiting. Alright, anyways, let's jump right into it. Coming in at the worst spot of all the bosses of shit petting in. This dude is by far the least threatening character in Inkwell. Every time I would have to restart against King Dice, I would purposely try to roll a 2 just so I can get an easy win. His attacks are slow and he throws no projectiles, so it's really, really easy to dodge. His moves are very, very predictable, so that's also very easy to dodge. Not really much else to say other than he sucks. This one's going to be short and sweet because there's not very much to say about her either. In the 8th spot, we got Paralyta. She's definitely a step up from Chips, but she still is an easy dub. I never really had any troubles facing her. She has two main attacks, both of which are very, very easy to dodge. If you have Smoke Bomb for your charm, you can easily just dash through her every single time she has her roulette balls come by you. Like I said, not really much here to say, she's not very good. Number 7 is the Magic Rabbit, Hoppus Pocus. He is slightly ahead of Pirouletta because of his suit attack. This is a little hard because you have to time up your parry with the suit, and on Switch it can be a little off sometimes, but it usually is no problem. You can just dash through his spinning suit attack and use the chaser gun to absolutely positively laser beam him down. Coming in at the 6th spot is Fear Lap. I actually really enjoy this boss fight. I think it's on the easier side of the bosses and has a really well designed boss. The Ghost Rider with the blue cape is a little tricky sometimes and you gotta keep an eye out for her. But if you can do that, you'll have no problem beating this level whatsoever. The most average boss in the history of bosses comes in at the most average spot out of the 9 bosses. In the 5th spot, we have Mangosteen the 8-Ball. The reason why he is in this spot is because he has a little bit of learning curve to him. The chalk moves in an aggressive pattern that can be a little hard to master, but once you have it down, it's really smooth sailing from there. His plasma ball that he bars out poses no threat at all and can be easily dodged. This is where the difficulty takes a step up for sure. The first five bosses were not very hard, but the next two gave me the work before I figured out how to constantly beat them. Coming in at the number four spot is Mr. Wheezy. This man has got to be the most basic and predictable boss in the entire game. I mean, he literally has one attack. One attack. But for some reason, the pattern of his fireballs throws me off every time. I never really felt comfortable using any gun against him because he was just at an awkward angle and range. I never liked landing in his square and usually tried to avoid him as much as possible. Taking the bronze medal is Pip and Dot. I really don't know what to think about these two. Some games are much easier than others with them, and some games they are the last people you want to face. I never really found my rhythm with them and just tried to avoid the two as much as possible. Moving platforms gives them a difficult personality than any of the other eight because you constantly have to be moving and dodging. Not a fun level at all. Try to avoid it. In the runner-up spot, we got the Tipsy Troop. I, oh, I absolutely despise these three. They are all so, so, so simple to understand and remember, but for some reason, it is just impossible to dodge all three of their attacks. The guy in the back was by far the ugliest in the game, and I could not stand getting hit by him. Just hate these three so much. Nothing more to say. Is it any surprise who was number one? The boss that literally could have been his whole own boss on the first aisle? It's the champion himself, Mr. Chimes. No one ever wants to land on him. Rolling on his square means you have like a 120 second boss fight. It's supposed to be a little mini side game, but turns into way more stress than there needs to be. 
absolutely no one likes him. To give him credit, I actually really like his concept. The mini matching game is an interesting idea, but not for a mini boss. And there you have it. All mini bosses range from worst to best in Inkwell Hell. I know there's a lot of things that could change up on this list, so let me know what y'all think in the comments. Please consider subscribing and giving me a thumbs up on the video. It shows me you guys care and want more like this. Appreciate y'all for watching. Get out of here.